Welcome to another video. Let's try to answer this question. Which one is larger, 1.02 raised to the power 100 or 2.8? I know you could almost tell that, hey, this power is huge. 1.02 raised to power 100 should be big enough to go past 2.8. If that's what you're thinking, You're correct, but it is not certain that you know what you're saying. You don't really know what you're saying. Assuming you just want to show me, show me how you know without you calculating 100 times or using a calculator. That is where a very nice tool shows up. It is called Bernoulli's inequality. Now, the main use of Bernoulli's inequality is not for this kind of exercise. But this is just to illustrate how useful it is. Bernoulli's inequality is more important in proofs. When you do proofs, there are times where you don't know the numbers. You don't see the numbers, but you can tell that the way this looks, I know which is bigger. So in this question, I am going to use Bernoulli's inequality to answer this question. And then I'm going to show you one way you can derive Bernoulli's inequality. Let's get into the video. So this is Bernoulli's inequality. And when I say Bernoulli, I mean Johann Bernoulli. Okay. Now, the same guy that invented L'Hopital's rule is the guy that did this. It says, if n is a natural number, so important. So we're just going to deal with there are different versions of Bernoulli's inequality. But the version I want to write is if n is a natural number and x is real, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So this is very important. X has to be a real number and it has to be greater than or equal to negative one. Then we say that one plus X raised to the power N is greater than or equal to one plus N X. This is Bernoulli's inequality for all real numbers greater than or equal to negative one and for all natural numbers. This is the most common one, okay? There are other forms of it, but that's not the focus of this video. So now, just by looking at this inequality, you can answer this question. You can say that 1.02 raised to the power 100 is the same thing as 1 plus 0 0.02 raised to the power 100. And we know this is greater than or equal to 1 plus 100 times 0 0.02. 1 point zero 0.02 raised to the power 100 is greater than or equal to, what is this? This is going to be 1 plus 100 times 0 0.02 is 2. And 1 plus 2 is greater than 2.8. So this is just a way to use it. So we know this number is greater than 3 and 3 is definitely greater than 2.8. So the bigger of these two numbers is actually this guy. Okay, now how do we obtain Bernoulli's inequality? Let's go here. Let me make some quick clarifications before we continue. Now, the first thing is the exponent has to be a natural number, so it's either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, okay? No fractions, no decimals, okay? Number two, this number here has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, which means we don't want to start guessing whether what is on the left is negative or positive. We don't want to guess. We don't want to deal with negative numbers, okay? We just want to make sure that even if it is a negative number, it's going to get smaller. That's why we want it to be less than or 
So if it is less than negative one, it means it's a fraction or it's, an, it's a positive integer or it's zero, okay? And that's easy for us to deal with when we go here and you're gonna see why. Okay, now, so whatever is in here will end up being a positive number that you're raising to a power or the worst it could be is zero because that would be the smallest x can be, negative one. So that's number one. Number two, the binomial expansion formula was not invented by Johann Bernoulli or any of the Bernoullis. When I'm saying invented, I mean, I mean the generalized form of this formula was invented by Sir Isaac Newton. So give him the respect he deserves. However, the binomial distribution used in probability and statistics was invented by Johann Bernoulli. So, don't mix them up. This is the binomial expansion, not the binomial distribution. Okay, let's go back. Now, anytime you want to distribute this, now I just made the same mistake. Anytime you want to do an expansion like this, you have to remember this, that a plus b to the n will always look like this. It's gonna be n combination k. Okay, you are picking, selecting k objects out of n, and what you have is gonna be a raised to power, the difference between these two, n minus k, and then b raised to power k. This is always every single term. And this term here is just n factorial, so this n can also be written this way. You may have seen it, k, n combination k. And this is the same thing as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial k factorial. But we're not gonna be doing all of these, okay? I'm just doing a quick review from your pre-calculus days. But what we need to do is know that the first term of any binomial expansion, this guy here is always one because we're gonna be doing n combination zero. Let's write it. So this is gonna be, oh, by the way, we're adding all these terms. So it's gonna be the sum of all these terms starting from k equals zero to n, okay? So we're adding from zero to n. So here we're gonna go and say this is equal to n combination zero. Then we're gonna have one. So this is gonna be one raised to power zero n minus zero rather, and then it's gonna be x times x raised to power zero. Ta-da-da, it's always whatever number. So we go to the next one. It's gonna be n combination one times one raised to power n minus one. Then we're gonna have x raised to power one. This is gonna be Let's say we get to the last term. The last term is gonna be, so this number is increasing from n, from zero all the way to n. So this is gonna be n combination n. Then your one, remember one is always the power from here to here. So it's gonna be one raised to power n minus n, which is zero. And then this is gonna be x to the n. Okay, this is the catch. When you look at each of these terms, this is gonna be one. This is basically x raised to power zero is one. One raised to power n is one. n combination zero is one. Because if you plug in zero for k, you're gonna get zero factorial. n minus zero is n. So it's n factorial over n factorial. You're gonna end up with one. So this is one. The first term is one. Let's do one more. We're gonna add the next term. What will this be? N combination one. Go back here. Plug in one for k. This is n minus one. This is one. So one factorial is one. We don't need to deal with it. So what we have here is n factorial over n minus one factorial. But n factorial is n times n minus one. Look, n factorial is n times n minus one factorial. So now if we divide by n minus one factorial, this is gone. What we have is just n. So n factorial over n minus one factorial, one factorial is just n. So this is n and this is x. Ooh. Then we're gonna have another term, plus. 
We're going to have another term. But we don't care about other terms. We don't care. But you notice that this guy was equal to everything. Now we've deleted a part of it. So we cannot say this guy is equal to this anymore. This guy was originally bigger. So it's bigger than what we're giving it, right? That's Bernoulli's inequality. <laughs> you just have to follow it to where it leads. And this is where it leads. This is Bernoulli's inequality. And remember the conditions. N is a natural number. And X is greater than or equal to negative 1. So there are different conditions that work with this. But what you want to know is that this is always true. And keep in mind, this is more useful when you do proofs than when you evaluate like this. But it's better that you can see this. I've seen people talk about proving this by mathematical induction, but this is a clear proof that this is greater than one plus nx. You may have a question wondering, what happens if x is actually negative because I can't assume everything is positive? Well, that even makes it nicer because whenever you expand and x is a negative number, if you look at the coefficients of any binomial expansion, when the coefficients are the same, the positive number always cancels out the negative number. Always. Okay, you check it out yourself. You're going to see that that's how it works. I don't want to dwell on it so this video doesn't get too long. But everything is all good, whether it's positive or negative, as long as it stays within this boundary, of x being greater than or equal to negative 1, everything is all good. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.